Okay, there we go. Alright, getting back to work. Um, so what I was explaining is that we can take this this uh, sandpaper and we can wrap it around something like this. So we have here a small piece of dowel. If we take that sandpaper, we don't even need that much. So let's break it again. So we've made a piece that's only about maybe one inch by a half an inch. And then we'll wrap it around the dowel like that. And then what we can do is we can use that and we can get in there and we can clean up that area where the nostril is. If it keeps coming off, then we might need to tape it. Yeah, I think we're going to have to tape that. So I have some masking tape that you can use for that. I'll have that in the toolbox. So basically you're just using that that dowel as a substitute for your finger to get into those really tiny little places. dry, we can see where we've put the spackle compound, that the deeper areas that have more compound in them are taking longer to dry. Can I touch it? Yeah. Go ahead. It's, it's feels just like the plaster, right? And for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much comparable. Um, if this is dry, and this is kind of dried out, then what you should do is get rid of it. So we'll just take uh, this piece of paper towel and we'll pull that off of it. There we go. Okay. Now, we, we should need to wipe that down again because we, we haven't really created any additional dust. So what we'll do is we'll just take a little more compound and trowel it over top of there. Um, that's still a little bit wet, but for the sake of expediency, and uh, so this video doesn't go too long, I think that it would be a good idea to do another coat right now. So lay that down and trowel that over top, like so. And we don't want to work it too much because I, the danger is that if we overwork it, then we'll soften that first layer and it might come off. So something like that is probably good enough for now. Okay, so that's the second coat. We probably won't need much more than just those two coats because that wasn't a very deep uh, recess. Let's just put a little bit there. Two on this side. The other side, okay. okay. So that's pretty good like that. Let's go to the other side. So <clears throat> that's not quite dry yet, but it's getting there. Put the speckle compound inside. There we go. And if you get a little bit beyond the hole, like here we have spackle compound surrounding the hole, that's okay, don't worry, that's, that's going to be fine, just fine. Um, let's do this very long crease here. Just put, we haven't really done much uh, cleaning up on this edge here, so it's going to take a lot more spackle compound because it's getting into not just that um, crease, but it's also filling in all of those rough areas that have yet to be filed down. So you can see that there's just a lot more 
material going on. Okay, there we go. See, that's a much bigger area. We'll take that off too. I think you want that off too, yes. Okay, so again, with one of these tools, um, because that's a lot of material, we want to take off. Okay, because we're working on the bottom part and we can't set it against the table, because, well, we can, I guess. It's not that hard to get in there. You just pull against that. But what you can do is if you need to work against uh, an area that's very close to the table, what you can do is you can prop this on top of um, a support. And I think that this styrofoam is the perfect material for that. So just break off a piece of styrofoam, lift your piece, and set it on the styrofoam. And that way, it's off the table, so you can get down without rubbing against the table. This is drying nicely, and that's drying nicely. Okay, so now the, the final part that I think is worth uh, explaining is when we have super um, delicate areas or very thin uh, recesses that we want to clean up without eliminating, the best tools to use are the tools that have a point, like this tool, for instance. Um, these tools are good too. This one is pretty good. That's got a nice point. Well, actually, that point is not great. It's kind of bent. Um, that's a nice one. Okay, so this has a point, plus it's very small. So that's going to work really well for this particular uh, process. So you just get in there and very carefully scratch away at that, at that recess. Okay. Very slowly and carefully so that we don't ruin it. Okay. What we don't want to do is to remove some of the detail, um, in this case, it would be the way that the flesh of the lips looks. And there, there are some uh, vertical creases that move this way. And we don't want to destroy that. So with a tool like that, we can very carefully get in there and clean up those areas where there's a little too much material. And we can keep we're satisfied. So the, the key here 
is to keep working at it until you're satisfied, okay? Until you think, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then leave it at that. Because it doesn't have to be perfect. And you're going to be putting a coat of paint, probably, over top of this anyway. So, some of these imperfections you won't see afterward anyway. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, once you're satisfied with the smoothness and how it looks, uh, you've filled all of the divots and voids and potholes um, or uh, small little recesses that shouldn't be there, and you've smoothened down those areas that are too rough for your liking. And you've cleaned up the individual features quite nicely. You can begin, if you like, to add extra detail. For instance, the eyebrows, in this case, are not really there, but you do have eyebrows. So what you can do, what you can do is um, you can work that area and make something that kind of resembles eyebrows to a degree. Probably the best way to do it is to first put some material on there so you actually have something to carve. So what we can do is take a bit of this. Okay, so now that's gotten a little bit uh, dry, so we're going to take that off of there. Like so. Okay. And we don't really want to carve in right now because then it would almost be like your eyebrows are recessed in your head. And that's not quite right. So what we'll do is we'll take a bit of the material and we'll kind of just goop it on there to a degree. We don't need a lot, a little bit. Like imagine, imagine how thick your eyebrows are, right? They might not be much thicker than a thin layer of this material. And if you want, just use your fingers to get it in place. Okay. <laughs> I'm making you look like Groucho Marx now. <laughs> but don't worry. So we've built up that, that area a little. So now that, that'll give us something to carve away. Right? But we won't be carving away the entire thing. What we'll be doing is scratching into it. So we'll be taking a sharp tool, like maybe that one, or even a tool like this. This is a clay working tool. Uh, it's just a pin or a needle set inside of a handle. And we can take that and we can just emulate what the eyebrows might look like. Making lines in there like that. Ideally it's better to wait for that material to dry, but I'm an impatient man, so I want to show you right now. You just gently carve into there. Okay, so that's actually that's not going to work very well. It's much better to let it dry and then do that. Right? But this is a this is a process you can do anywhere on your piece. So if you feel like 
you want a stronger jaw, right? You can add some of this and you know do some work on your on your um, features and make them look uh, different if you want. Not too different. I, I still want this to look like you because it is a self-portrait. Maybe we'll just leave that like that for now. We'll let it dry. But you have the idea, right? That mm -hmm. when you're carving features like eyebrows, let's show the audience. Okay, so we've built up where the eyebrows are going to be. And we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to carve into it with one of these sharp tools. Probably, well, Maybe not that tool. I don't know. Probably a tool like that. It has a very fine point, very sharp and pointy. But you can also use, if you want, a tool like this, um, something that has an edge. And you can kind of work the, the surface just by doing something like that, OK? Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. We also have. If you want to do something kind of uh, radical to your piece, like for instance, you don't like how long the neck is, what we can do is we can take this saw. Um, I'm not going to do it on Zizi's piece because we've already worked hard to make that flat. So let's set that aside for now and let it drop. And let's take this piece, okay? So <clears throat> we can work this the same way that we worked Zizi's piece. We can make that nice and flat using the sure form by pushing the sure form against it, like so, in the back edge to take off that material. But suppose you want to take off more material than just clean it up. So what you can do is you can use a saw. Okay, this is just a cross-cut saw. It's a small jack saw, is what it's called officially. And super portable, super easy to use. Let's get that in position. We're not going to cut off very much because I don't think we want to waste that much material. But I want to show you how the saw works. So you can use your index finger on your other hand to guide the saw for the first couple of strokes, okay? Just to get it going. So I have my finger at the back there, and it's kind of resting very gently against the saw. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull back on the saw very gently so that I create this little incision, okay? So now I don't need my index finger to be there anymore, so I'll get my hand well out of the way, put it way back here, then I'll set the saw inside of that little incision that I made. And using the entire length of the blade, that's about a foot long, right? We'll go back and forth. In very smooth strokes, very deliberately. And take it slow, there's no need to rush. So suppose that now you want to continue the cut, but you don't want it to go in the same direction. What we can do is we can reposition our piece. Okay. And then, the same way, we'll kind of take our index finger and position it where we want the saw to be. And then very carefully draw it back to make a little incision. Then get our hand well out of the way and begin a new stroke on a different part. Ah, okay. You don't have quite enough material to work with there.
there. That's good. Okay, so let's clean it up now. With this shirt on. With this one, most of the mess is around the outer edge. The center part is fairly clean, so we're not going to worry too much about that. And if there are holes on the back like that, don't worry about them, because this part will have glue on it, and it'll be stuck to the board, right? So when that's all cleaned up and ready to go, then we have our, our support which is just one eighth inch hardboard. We can use either the white side or the natural side. It doesn't matter, whatever suits your purposes. If you're gonna paint, then I would suggest this side because it's already nice and white and you don't have to prime it or anything. When we get back from reading week, we're gonna use PL400 and we're gonna put the PL400 on the back. We're going to glue that down, and then we're going to use some screws from behind to attach it very strongly to the board. And all of the other materials that you're going to add to your support to, uh, to tell your narrative or to, to, to uh, tell your story about who you are, you can put on with um, hot glue or white glue or carpet. Glue. All of those glues work really well on the found objects and the materials, but not the plaster pieces, okay? The plaster pieces must be put on with this very strong construction adhesive. And uh, I'll show you in a separate demonstration how to do that. Okay, does anybody have questions? How do I deal with something? Do I use the small tools to deal with something like that? That kind of excess buildup around the mouth? Yes. Okay. Um, you could, because there's quite a lot of material yeah, there. Yeah, take the first couple layers off yeah, of that. You, yeah, I would okay. begin maybe with a tool like this, okay. with that rounded edge, not the flat one. Right? And just work in there in a very gentle, methodical way. And as you get further down, then you can begin to work with um, finer tools. So that's, see that came off yeah. pretty quickly, yeah. but there's still more material there. But so what we can do now is we can choose um, maybe a, a tool like that. See how rounded that is? That rounded shape is nice for getting into areas like that. So we use that and just keep scraping away at it until that's been carved down or reduced to the point that we like. So the idea is you work from roughest to finest using tools that are appropriate the larger tools that are more aggressive at, in the beginning when there's lots of material to take off. And then the finer tools later on, ending with the, um, the sandpaper. So that's almost entirely gone now. Yep. What we can do now is we can change from this tool to 